Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for, to the Finnish Center for Pensions for having me here. It's a um, very uh, important topic, and especially in the light of uh, the pension reform, uh, to be here. And as uh, Miko said, in the light also of changing labor markets and life courses too, because uh, transformation on the labor markets is one thing, and life courses also is related, but many, many things have been changing. So uh, my presentation will focus on the impact or the issues and challenges of uh, changing labor markets, demographics, and life courses on pension ent entitlements in an OECD perspective. Um, so, very shortly, I will uh, present the context. Uh, of course, uh, sti we are still in uh, um, a low growth and a very high unemployment uh, uh, context in many countries in the OECD areas uh, and of rapid aging. Um, and I will illustrate uh, the challenges and the risk for pension systems stemming from this situation. And finally, I will uh, cover some uh, conclusion and policy recommendation. So, uh, as I said, this is really the context that characterizes uh, uh, to different uh, extents uh, countries in Europe and the OECD, but uh, this is really what's going on. So, uh, life expectancy is increasing, uh, which is a wonderful news uh, for many of us because, uh, uh, of course, uh, um, people are living longer, which is a wonderful achievement. Uh, and probably is less for policymakers when they talk about pensions and aging policies. But um, uh, in addition to increasing, to life expectancy increases, this also means that the share of the elderly will increase substantially. And you can see here what this implies, for example, for Finland and other countries uh, in the periods going between 2013 and 2016. In Finland, for example, the share of elderly 65 plus in total population will pass from almost uh, from uh, around 19% in 2013 to more than 25% in 2016. And uh, the same trend uh, uh, is observed in many European countries, and in some countries, uh, this is really uh, a very strong increase uh, where the share of the elderly almost double in the next uh, 40 years. Uh, at the same time, the population is shrinking uh, because in many countries, this is not a, a general trend uh, because uh, in some countries, uh, Fertility rates are not declining. France is a champion of fertility, for example, and uh, while Southern Europe still have very low uh, fertility level, and uh, this is also true in many Asian countries like Japan and South Korea that have very low uh, fertility rates. And this also means that uh, in terms of pensions, um, without talking about migration, which is a, a difficult issue, uh, in, this kind, in this particular context because uh, uh, migrants uh, may be children or uh, adults or prime age workers and so the implication that they may have on pensions are different of course but if we think about uh, in a satirist parallel situation so uh, we look at what does imply the increase in life expectancy and the decline in fertility rates it, mean, it also means that the, the, the share of contributors uh, for retirees uh, is going to decline uh, in many countries and also in uh, Finland, of course. And this uh, uh, has a bear on, uh, on pension expenditure, on public pension expenditures in particular. And uh, all these data on pension expenditure are gathered from the uh, aging report of the European Commission. And uh, you can see it here what this chart does not cover, and is very important to highlight, is what's going on between 2015 or 2010, 2015 and 2060. Because in some countries, you can see the situation in 2060. For example, you see in Finland, uh, what I reported there is that uh, in Finland, the, the pension expenditure between the two dates uh, is almost stable. But what we don't observe here is what's going on between the two dates. 
And in some countries, the, uh, the pension expenditure is increasing, is increasing exponentially until uh, around 2020, 2030, and then starts to decline. So, uh, so this chart is important because uh, it highlights what will happen in the long term, given that some reform has been put in place, but misses a part of the picture, that is, what's going on between the two dates, and why countries have taken measures to contain the pension expenditures. Hmm? Uh, and this, uh, in fact, uh, leads me to talk about the trends of pension reforms, because these trends uh, of rapid aging of the population and shrinking population have also driven many countries to adopt uh, reforms uh, mainly focused to reduce or contain public pension expenditures. This has occurred in different ways hmm? uh, around, uh, across OECD countries, and in many countries uh, this has also implied that uh, in addition to public pensions, uh, private pensions are playing a, a major role because they have either replaced or substituted a part of the public pensions. But in general, what we observe, and in other countries, of course, there has, and in most countries, of course, there has been a big um, focus on extending working lives. Because extending working lives helps both the financial sustainability side and the retirement adequacy side, which is important too. Uh, but in all the reforms, uh, we, we can see that low earners have been, in general, better protected than average wage workers uh, or uh, higher wage workers. Um, and in fact, according to the estimation made by the OECD, we can see that the net, net pension replacement rates are uh, lower in, on average for average wage worker compared to the lower uh, wage, uh, lower wage workers. Um, as I said, uh, these, uh, the trends of pension reform has also meant in many countries uh, expansion of private pension coverage, but also reversal of uh, private pension uh, uh, system in many Eastern Euro European countries. Um, and, uh, and in parallel, there will also be a trend of expanding uh, public pensions uh, covering categories that were not previously covered, like the self-employed, hmm? or increasing their contribution rates. Um, and uh, other uh, important measures uh, have been uh, uh, may be found in the enhancement of administrative efficiency and transparency of, transparency of the pension system. What has happened is that uh, uh, and this is very important, I say it at the, at the end, but it's not uh, the last uh, thing, it's, it's really important, is that many countries have tried to strike a balance between financial sustainability and retirement income adequacy, which is very important. A focus on uh, financial sustainability is not enough, and uh, retirement income adequacy is, very, is critical for pension reforms because, uh, as Mikos was saying before, as Ch labor markets are changing, there is the risk that those that are the most vulnerable for their career, earning paths, and uh, their, uh, in old age uh, with very little pensions and face a higher risk of poverty. Hmm? Um, these trends also mean that uh, uh, the situation across OECD country is very varying. Um, and uh, the replacement rates for future retirees across OECD countries are very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, these are net uh, replacement rates from mandatory public and private. And uh, in some countries where the voluntary are important, we model also that. And so you can see that uh, you have countries where um, the public, uh, the public uh, uh, replacement rates are really, net replacement rates are really very low, like Mexico and Chile, and the uh, country at uh, the other range uh, have very high uh, replacement rates. And Finland is uh, uh, about the average, OECD average. Hmm? Uh, 
What does this mean? Okay, the, the, the estimation the OECD does, uh, this is, and they just presented, uh, are based on a very uh, baseline assumption. So people enter on the labor market when they're age 20 and stay there until they reach the normal retirement age of the country. So what I presented, sorry, what I presented is, is the results of a full career case. It's a theoretical case, but it, it allows us to, um, to make comparisons that uh, are not affected by external factors. So these are really the policy, the pension policy in the countries under the condition that the person has a full career. This is a very theoretical case. Why? Because there are people participate and uh, work. Uh, however, there are very reason, many, very many reasons why people spend periods out of the labor markets, and or either because they are inactive or because they are uh, on leaves or because they have. Uh, they are being educated, they are unemployed, they are care for sick relatives or their children, and uh, they uh, exit the labor market for early retirement, etc., etc., etc. And uh, among employed people, uh, even then, there are huge differences, and differences that uh, because the employment rate of people around uh, across the city country and the world is not unique. There are differences according to education level, gender, number of children, age of the children, for example, but also health status uh, and uh, other issues that are very important. So, and this was also covered in the pension adequacy report of the Commission. Uh, so, these are, these are some of the reasons that uh, make people not equal facing the unemployment. And if we look, one of uh, the differences that is usually reported is the differences by gender. We can see that there is a large diversity in employment profiles of uh, men and women over the life courses. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can see it, uh, much of the difference occurs between the age of 29 and 49, where the curves are really far from each other. Mm -hmm. And then they start being uh, more, the difference starts becoming smaller. And this is why, not only because uh, during the year that I just mentioned, there is a crunch of competing needs of care and work for women in many cases, but also when they are a little more old, older, there is a crunch in caring needs for sick relatives, for, especially for women. And then it's not because uh, women and men uh, work a lot when they are old that the differences decline. Is that in many cases they work much less than in their prime age when they are older. And uh, of course, as I just said, female labor participation is very uh, different from uh, men's, uh, even if differences have uh, declined over time. And uh, you can see in Finland, uh, it's very, the difference between the participation rates of uh, 15 and 64 years old between men and women is much smaller than in other countries, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is a, a lot of implication for pensions, mm -hmm. especially because, uh, as uh, Miko was saying, is that the, the, the pensions in Finland is largely determined by your working careers, in a sense. Even if then there is uh, the first uh, pillar of, uh, uh, of, uh, of pensions that help those that, have, that are the most vulnerable. Hmm? But you can see here that across OECD countries in 2015, the situation were very uh, varied. Hmm? Uh, with uh, countries like uh, Turkey, Mexico, even Italy, and uh, much of the southern European countries that have very large differences in uh, the participation rates of men and women. And in addition, where we talk about pension, we think about wages, uh, we think about gender wage gaps, and we can see that uh, 
gender wage gaps are still substantial in many countries. Hmm? Uh, so you have uh, uh, the diamond is the 2005 and the green bar is 2014. You can see that in many countries, gender wage gaps have declined, hmm? uh, but in some countries they are still substantial. Hmm? And uh, in Finland, uh, they are around 12% in uh, 2013. Then, as I said, employment rates are different also between men and women because uh, uh, women and men have children, but generally the care rests on the, the care uh, task rests on the on a woman. And uh, you can see here the employment rates according to the age of the children and the number of the children. And you can see everywhere that there is a drop either when the woman has a child that is very young or when the woman has, a, has more than three, has three or more children. Hmm? So this is what we were talking, I was saying before, is the idea of a competing, a crunch a competing needs between care and work. Of course, many of these women probably want to stay at home, and, uh, and uh, I, I'm not talking about this. What I'm talking is that uh, about the, the need for the women that want to work to have a system of childcare and uh, that are affordable and quality to allow these women to go back to work if they want and to share better the care task between men and women. Hmm? So involving the fathers also, which would may be a way to, to change the, the situation. And also they tend, women tend also to have uh, um, more atypical careers and uh, to work more in uh, part-time jobs. In Finland, part-time is not uh, high uh, compared to other countries, but still you can see that even in the low uh, or in the bottom of uh, the distribution, uh, there is a, a gap between the incidence of part-time among genders. Mm -hmm. And this is important because there are very few uh, pension systems. Portugal and Germany are two examples that have credit built in the pension system that allow to consider the part-time, for example, that woman used to care for the children to consider that they have contributed as they worked full time, hmm? which uh, allowed to fill some of the gap in contribution. So what are the risks of this situation? Uh, there are the risks that there are intergenerational gaps that are increasing. And in fact, we observe that uh, uh, poverty risks are shifting from the, from the whole to the youth, or in general in the OECD. On average, this is not true everywhere, however, because in some countries, uh, young, uh, the, older, uh, the elderly have still higher poverty risk. Uh, unemployment is very high and career are precarious. Um, employment rates of older workers have increased uh, while they have declined in general for young people. And uh, there are also uh, differences in employment rates when older between men and women. And financial risk, of course, is an issue in some of these countries, especially when private pensions are important. So, as I said, one of the risks is that uh, uh, the poverty risk that have shifted uh, from, the, from the old to the youth uh, across uh, uh, time. Mm -hmm. So, you can see the green, uh, the green line is uh, 2013, where you see that the poverty risk is much lower for older people than it, it is for younger people. And this is a, a real success of pension system mm -hmm. because uh, the relative incomes of the elderly have increased over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pension system as they have been built have, uh, have uh, operated to protect elderly and to allow them to have this uh, uh, situation nowadays. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was saying, the young people, however, uh, very often have uh, made the experience of uh, uh, delayed entry on the labor market. This may occur because they stay longer in education, which is a common trend of the last decade. 
but it's also because the, they don't manage to get a job or to get a foothold in the labor market with a permanent contract. So very often they have uh, very precarious careers and uh, or either they are needs, so they are nor in employment, not in education and nor in training. Hmm? And uh, in, these are data from uh, the Employment Outlook 2015 and you can see that even in Finland, uh, I mean, the percentage of needs uh, between the 15 and 29 was uh, 12%. And again, there are huge differences across countries. I realized this morning that this, uh, the name of the country has, uh, have, um, I don't know where they went, but uh, uh, this is the, the poverty rates of men and women. What this chart convey, would have liked to convey, I would say better, is that... Uh, being, on, being above the 45 degrees lines means that uh, women are more likely to be poor when they are elderly. Mm -hmm. So these are the poverty rates of uh, women and men aged 65 and over. And when they are beyond, below the poverty lines, uh, below the 45 lines, it means that women are less at risk of poverty. You can see that uh, uh, there are almost no uh, country. Uh, Finland was uh, uh, on the, the third circle on, on, the, on the line, so they were very low poverty levels. And the Netherlands uh, is, if I remember correctly, is that one. While there you have Estonia, for example, uh, that has uh, very, very high poverty rates for women compared to, when, to men when they are old. And as I said, uh, employment rates of older workers have increased. What is very important is that uh, the largest contribution to this increase uh, in many countries has, the, has been by women. Hmm? And uh, you can see, uh, this is for example in uh, Finland, uh, you can see that the increase uh, is uh, between 2005 and 2014. Is, more, is almost 10% for women uh, and uh, uh, almost 5% uh, for men. So the, la the largest contribution to the increase in the employment rates of older workers is by women, which is again a very good news. Oh, sorry. And uh, this is come back uh, to the idea that uh, why we focus on life courses, labor market changes, and uh, why this is, in, is important for pensions. It's because uh, in many countries, uh, there are earnings-related pensions, and where pensions are determined by the wages people uh, earn during the lifetime, and uh, uh, by the years worked. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the pension gap for women, age, women and men aged 65 and plus based on the UCILC data set. And uh, you can see that on average, uh, you have uh, on the OECD that are included here, 27%, so it means that uh, uh, pension of women are lower by 27% in OECD countries with huge gap in some countries uh, that are at the end of the chart and very, very, very little gap at the, at the beginning of the chart. So, for example, Slovakia, the Slovak Republic Estonia a very small pension gap. Um, and uh, again, you have, uh, I don't know, France, Spain, uh, United Kingdom, Austria, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany that have uh, very, very large pension gap. In the last case, uh, it's almost above 40%, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, why this is interesting? This is interesting because uh, some, of ca some countries, uh, uh, and I will not touch this, uh, this issue today, are also moving uh, in the direction of getting rid of the survivor pensions. And uh, in many countries, the survivor pension have managed to fill the gap uh, for the woman that could not work. Uh, so in a sense, can be interpreted as a sort of uh, uh, way of 
uh, smoothing inequality between men and women over the career. And uh, it is true that women are working more than in the past at all ages. Uh, so the differences in the working career are certainly smaller than they, are, they were in the past. But it's also true that uh, this, the gender gap is not, uh, uh, is not something that will go away like this. Because there will always be this idea of the competing care task at some point of the life. Hmm? And, uh, and you can see that uh, even if uh, the employment rates of uh, workers have increased, as I said, there are huge differences across age groups. Hmm? So the older, the older people, the older workers are not working uh, in many countries, which is, uh, in a sense, uh, driven by the retirement age. Hmm? Because the retirement age has increased, and so this means that there will be uh, a change in the participation patterns of the labor market of older people. But uh, as things stand now, there is a, a room really for improvement in many countries. While another issue I will not focus on, I will not talk about, I'm not talking about penibility, because this is a huge issue, because there are some of these people that will not be able to work more than what they do now. So, so when we talk about the, 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 the life course changes and the fact that uh, these life course changes uh, have to do with uh, changes in the labor market and in the institutions, uh, how do we tackle the problem of those that are not able to stay on the labor market longer, for example? This is an open question. And uh, in many cases, uh, even if retirement ages are increasing, uh, exit from the labor market is occur ma much earlier than uh, the statutory ret retirement age. Mm -hmm. um, so these are data that are computed by the OECD uh, and uh, are reported in uh, the latest edition. So you see. Um, Finland is uh, down, further down in, uh, in, the, in the range. So to come, up, to come at the core, I'm sorry, I will be very, uh, I will try to not be too long. <laughs> uh, what will be the impact uh, on pensions of these different uh, uh, labor market and family situations? So. And the idea is to answer to the question how incomplete careers affect pension entitlements. There are, as I already said, credit mechanisms that uh, exist in most OECD countries. Uh, and these credit mechanisms are uh, allowed to cover periods spent out of paid employment, either because uh, people enter late because of education, uh, because of unemployment, parental leaves, and these are explicitly considered in the estimation we uh, have done at the OECD. However, uh, we have not yet considered, uh, probably my colleagues will do, and it's uh, credit for part-time, as I said, and credits for, to care for sick relatives. However, I can say already that very few countries offer mm, credits for caring for sick relatives mm, and uh, for part-time work. Mm. Um, so, uh, what is important to say is that uh, the fact that the country grant a credit for a period spent out of the labor market has not the same effect everywhere if country A, country B have two credit mechanisms, is not absolutely certain that the outcome will be the same. Why? Because the characteristic of the credits vary a lot across countries. Hmm? Uh, it varies, they vary because uh, uh, the pensionable earnings uh, on which the, the, the credited period uh, is taken into account for pension are not the same. Some countries use the earnings prior to the absence, just prior to the absence. Others take a fixed salary. Uh, 
So, for example, in the case of Finland, after the period of 11 months of parental leave, you have uh, a, an amount that is taken into account that is uh, around 700 uh, euro, hmm? but it's not, uh, it's not the wages. It's, it's, it's an amount that is taken into account. Austria does the, Austria does the same, for example. Uh, some countries taking into account the minimum wage. So the fact that uh, instead of taking into account the earnings that the people earned just before the absence and taking into account uh, an, an amount that is lower has already an important effect on the pensions in countries where you have earnings related pensions that are tightly related to, uh, to your earnings. And the duration insured. There are countries that insure three months, four months, five months, six months, and I mean, the, the number of uh, period, the, the months insured varies also according to the number of children. Mm -hmm. uh, so this means that both for unemployment and childcare, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, a country is, uh, have uh, a, a, a credit mechanism does not ensure that the effect is the same, especially because in some countries, even if there are not credit me me mechanisms, there are some sort of implicit mechanism that allows to disregard uh, this absence. For example, in Spain or in the United States, when you take only account uh, a number of years, 35 years, 37 years of your career, it means that uh, if you, the best or the, 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 the period you have worked during this period, it means that uh, uh, the others that you spent out of the labor market does not enter in the calculation of your pension. So this is a way implicitly disregarding your absence. Or either in many countries where you have a safety net or you have a pension that is based on the residence, as in Finland, this may be an implicit way of taking account of the absence for those that, I mean, that have vulnerable careers. So. Um, these are the results uh, on the OECD pension models of uh, the absence uh, related to childcare and unemployment. Um, so uh, the first is uh, childcare and the second is unemployment. Uh, we can, what we can say is that uh, the impact increases on the duration. Uh, as long, uh, the longer the duration of uh, the break, the, long, the larger is the impact on the pension entitlements. This um, compares the pension level of someone that has uh, still two children but there has not uh, left the labor market in the first case and is aged between 30 and 40 uh, with uh, someone that has two children and they left uh, the labor market uh, during uh, a period going between uh, one to ten years. Um, not only is the impact of this break increasing uh, the longer the duration, but the impact is also higher for higher earnings hmm, compared to lower earnings. And it's the same uh, for unemployment. Hmm. The impact on unemployment is a little bit uh, higher uh, than uh, the impact on uh, childcare, but uh, is very similar, the, the trend. Hmm. Um, so this is an important uh, uh, observation, evidence, saying that uh, the longer uh, that we could imagine in many countries where, uh, in the countries where uh, there is a, a titling between earnings and pensions, the effect is that the longer you stay out of the labor market, the, the, large, the lower will be your pension. Mm -hmm. But this, as I said, is the average, doesn't say much. Look, uh, the, these are the, uh, what happens in different countries. So you can see that, uh, again, differences are very large. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so, in some countries, you have uh, uh, a difference uh, that is almost uh, is more than uh, twelve percent, uh, like in Germany, uh, Mexico, uh, Iceland. While there are countries that completely offset the impact of absence, and this, as I said, is because uh, uh, the way these. Uh, credit mechanism interact with uh, the, the rules of the pension system are different. And um, Finland uh, is, uh, this is the case of uh, uh, an absence of five years uh, for childcare. Uh, 
compared to a full career working woman with two children, and is uh, 5% the reduction compared to someone that has not interrupted the labor market. Hmm? On, uh, you can see the differences uh, for, uh, related also to different uh, level of wages, and this is the situation for, um, for unemployment. Again, huge differences. Why not only the, grant, the mechanism is also because the pension system is different, of course. And uh, for example, in countries where you have private pensions, DC private pension, is very rare that there are credits. The only situation where this happens is uh, uh, Denmark in the occupational system and in Sweden. And uh, in Estonia to some extent. So in the countries where private pension are important, there is the risk that when women leave the career and they do not voluntarily contribute to the labor market, they have uh, a bigger impact on, uh, on their pensions. So, uh, to conclude, um, I think that there are two main, uh, two main uh, concern, policy concern for the adequacy of pensions that emerge from the presentation. One is uh, work and caregiving competing needs. Mm. This is the case of uh, women that I illustrate here, but and for children, but uh, I think it's even, the, probably it will be even, um, I don't know, or larger for the, the same or larger for uh, older women that uh, live uh, the labor market uh, uh, to care for uh, their sick relatives because the, the likelihood they come back is even lower. And then unemployment, hmm? unemployment, uh, which is very important at whatever the stage of the career. Uh, because uh, on one side, we can think that unemployment at the beginning of the career uh, affects uh, the entire career, and uh, there are a lot of studies uh, on the impact of unemployment at the beginning of the career on human capital uh, and, uh, and the wages that the person will uh, have over the career, but during the career we have also seen that uh, it is a very important, um, a, a very important event. Entry, delayed entry due to education uh, was covered in the past by mm, credits, but uh, it has been found that many of these systems are really regressive. So many countries are getting rid because these mechanisms are expensive and, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, will deepen the inequality between those that can uh, achieve higher education and those that will not. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, there are these breaks in the careers affect um, the incomes, the retirement incomes, but also social sustainability on, on the pension system. And uh, this also implies that uh, aging may become more unequal and uh, um, equity across the generation may be jeopardized. And, uh, but what is very important, and I would like to highlight this, is that uh, it's not clear and what, how much and if uh, it's the role of pension system to take care of all this. Mm -hmm. uh, pension system are probably can mitigate some of these risks mm -hmm. and some of these uh, inequalities, but uh, they are not uh, conceived and they are not uh, structured to eliminate this inequality. Inequality on the labor market, uh, inequality in the caring needs, uh, so this implies there should be a coordinated uh, um, uh, set of policies, family, education, policies working together with labor market and pension policies to try to tackle these challenges. And uh, what is important is that prevention is better than cure, and uh, this wide range of policies may narrow inequality and its effect on pension, bringing young people into the labor market is a top pro priority concern for uh, countries, should be. Uh, supporting life learning uh, and skill development over the life cycle is also extremely important in the light of the changing of labor markets. 
But important, important concerns are also preventing parents from leaving labor market for too long and being stuck outside of the labor market uh, and uh, in part a job with also a more um, a more uh, balanced share of tasks, uh, leave tasks between men and women, and uh, cutting the line of unemployment by helping labor markets to function more efficiently and uh, matching people, skills, and job. And uh, so I leave uh, the audience with two questions. How to improve, uh, to improve uh, the design of current pension system to make them better suited to modern life course realities. And uh, another one that is uh, also very important is, uh, does the redistribution as it is now occurs at the right stage of the life courses? And uh, do existing program adequately cover risk of periods of need and uh, concrete responses may uh, eventually and hopefully uh, contribute to a more balanced uh, equitable aging. Thanks a lot.